Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm just us right now, whilst everyone else is, well, while everyone else joined. Um, can we just lift up our voice in worship to our God this morning or this afternoon or this evening, depending on where we are? Um, let's just worship Him. Take all the glory, O oh God. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. I lift you high. Yahweh, Yahweh, I lift you high. Yahweh, Yahweh. You know, this morning, a song that really is staying with me, and I, it's just a line. I don't even think I know the other lines of the song, but that one line is just all I've been singing, and I feel like we need to sing it, but we sing it with understanding. We sing it as a sign of submission. And it's, you know. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high, yes, you are the Lord. Most high, you know, just that line is, yes, you are the Lord. You know, as we sing that line, I always want to say this song, as we sing that line, this moment, let us declare it that, yes, he is the Lord. As we sing that line, Yes, you proclaim him Lord over every area of your life. You proclaim him Lord of your mind, Lord of your body, Lord of your spirit and your soul, the Lord of your finances, the Lord of your career, the Lord of your business endeavors, the Lord of your marriage, the Lord of your parenting, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord most high. And so this morning with that song, we're going to enter into the presence of our God. We're going to lift up his name, declaring that he is Lord. And so as we sing that song, as we sing that line, we're saying it with understanding. We're saying it as a declaration. We're saying it, you know, to honor our God that he is indeed the most high. And so we're going to sing that line again with understanding this morning that, yes, you are the Lord. Most high, 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 over that decision he's asked you to make, declare that he is Lord. Over that obedience, over that instruction, over your life, over that move, over that thing he has said, declare and decree him as Lord. And if he is your Lord, the answer is yes. The answer is yes, if he is your Lord. And so that song really for us this morning is the beginning. It's a song of consecration. It's a song of submission where we are saying that, yes, yes, you are the Lord. You are the Lord of my life. You are the one that leads me. You are the one that directs me. What you say I should do, I will do. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the most high God. I will not bow to another God. I will not serve another God. You and you alone at the most high God. And it's to you I am submitted. It's to you I am surrendered. Yes, you are the Lord. Saints, can we sing this morning? Yes, you are the Lord. If you can unmute your mic, if where you are is not noisy, please let's unmute our mic. Sing that song. Declare those lines. Declare those words as our consecration, as our submission, that yes, he is the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. Over my life, yes, you are the Lord most high. Yes, you are the Lord most high. Yes, you are the Lord. 
most high. Oh, yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. This morning, IRA, IRA comes before you. We declare that, yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are our God. You are the God to whom we gather every watch hour. We gather to know one. We gather to know set of people. We gather to know ideology. We gather to you, to you, Jesus, to do the things you've asked us to do, to pray the way you've asked us to pray. And so, Lord, this morning we decree and we declare. We decree and declare our total allegiance to your government. And we say, yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are our God. And we will follow you. All the days of our life, we will follow you. We will not bow to any other God. We know that the gods that we bow to in this generation, they're not idols. They're not um, figurines or images made by the hands of men. The idols of the spirits of Jezebel, of fame, of ambition, the mammon, those are the gods. We will not bow to any other god. We declare Jesus, Yeshua, this morning that you are the Lord. We enter in this morning declaring and decreeing that you are the Lord. You are our God. You are the Lord. You are the captain of our lives, the captain of our lives, the Lord of the heavens armies. You are the Lord and you are that God whom we worship. You are that God who we will serve. We will serve no other God. Brothers and sisters, can you declare this morning your allegiance to the Lord? Can you unmute your mic with me this morning as we decree and declare our allegiance to the government of our God, to the government of the God that we serve? Yes, you are the Lord over IARA. Yes, you you are the Lord over our lives. Yes, you are the Lord over our money. So therefore, we put it where you ask us to put it. We will give it where you ask us to give it, to whom you ask us to give it to. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the most high God. This morning, oh Father, we decree and we declare, we submit to you, oh God. Oh, the captain, you are the captain of our lives. And we say yes and amen. We say yes and amen to your will and to your way and to your government, to the things you want done on the earth, Lord. We say yes and amen. You are our Lord. You are our master. It is to you we serve. It is you we serve. It is you we pledge our allegiance to. Yes, you are the Lord. 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 You are the most high God. Yes, you are our God. Yes, you are our our Lord. Yes, you are our Lord. This morning, I really feel to stay on this. Whatever it is you have been struggling with, whatever instruction you have been struggling to obey, whatever it is that is wanting to defy what God says about you, submit it to him this morning, declaring, yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. Over this situation, you are the Lord. Over my marriage, you are the Lord of this marriage. You are the Lord of this marriage. And so I speak the peace, sir, the peace, the peace that you bring. I say yes and amen to your peace. Oh, you are the Lord of my finances. <laughs> you are the Lord of my finances. It means uh, that out of the abundance that you have made available, that's what I spend from. That's where I live from. So I cannot be broke. I cannot be in lack because you are the Lord of my finances. You are Lord of my finances. So I give when you ask me to give. I hold back when you ask me to hold back. I take it to that place where you ask me to. You are the Lord. You are the Lord of my body. You are the Lord of my health. You take charge. You own it. It's your temple. And so sickness and disease has absolutely no right in it. You are Lord. Yes, you are the Lord most high. Yes, you are the Lord most high. Yes, you are the Lord most high. Father, we thank you this morning. We decree your Lordship. Even this morning on this watch, as we gather to pray, you are Lord. It is to you we have come. 
And because you are Lord and we submit our request to you in accordance to your will, we thank you because we know that you would hear us. We thank you, O oh God, because we know, because you hear us as we pray according to your will, and we know that you've answered. And so even in advance, we thank you for answers to our prayers this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, I'm not sure how many of us have been really, um, you know, following up and attending the Recalibrate Conference, whether off-site, um, whether virtually or online. And, you know, this morning as I was preparing for this, um, I think one of the things that the Holy Spirit really placed heavily on my heart for us to pray about um, is from something that DPK, um, you know, spoke about at the morning afternoon session yesterday. And it really was about, relationships and so this morning i want to lead us in in the prayer for relationships i think that's really one of the things that is on god's mind as he um you know takes all of us through our seasons whether corporately or as individuals you know the season of our lives that we're in and the things that we're doing the things that we're embarking on the things we're about to do there is a role that relationships play uh, play and i'm just going to ask us to pray um, you know, based on some of the things that was taught yesterday. And if you haven't listened to it, I really do recommend that you go and catch up with, you know, the teachings from the Recalibrate Conference. Um, you know, talking about relationships, um, you know, it is understanding that we come into a place where, yes, there's some relationships that we have um, built over the years, some really by just by sheer coincidence that, you know, we're classmates or that we went to the same, um, we work in the same organization, we're colleagues, whichever way, and they perhaps have served their purpose. And no, it is not a council culture. It is just a wisdom and understanding. And so we're going to pray this morning. We're going to ask that the Lord God Almighty will give unto us. Let me take it this way. I feel we need to actually start by praying Isaiah. Isaiah chapter um, 11 and verse 7. We'll start with that. And it's really the seven spirits of the Lord. Um, Isaiah 11 and verse 2. I'm just going to put that here in the comments uh, section. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. I think I'd also take a part of 3. Um, so yes, it'd be Isaiah 11 verses 2 and 3. Okay. And it says, and the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of the Lord will rest on her. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance, nor make a decision based on fear. Say, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength the spirit of knowledge and of the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. He will delight in the fear of the Lord and he will not judge by what his eyes see. We're going to really pray this prayer this morning. We're going to pray it with understanding as it pertains to our relationships. So as we pray for the seven spirits of God to be manifested in our lives, we're going to pray. Let the spirit of wisdom, Father, concerning my relationships, the spirit of wisdom be activated. The wisdom to know exactly what a relationship is, who a person is in my life, the spirit of understanding. You know, I really want us to pray this seven spirit in the context of our relationships. So as we are where we are, if we are, if it's not noisy, please unmute your mics and let us pray together. The seven spirit of God in the context of our relationships, that Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, your spirit will rest upon me, O God. The spirit of wisdom, O God, help me to be wise in my relationships. Help me to have the wisdom to know, O God. Help me to have wisdom in the relationships that you place me in my life. O God of heaven, the spirit of understanding, help me to understand who a person is to me. Help me to understand the spirit of record. Let me recognize recognition of oh God, the people to me, the relevance is, of the people to what, me, oh Lord. 
what what in is the that mighty in, name the of Jesus Christ, in the relationship? In the relationship ought to have ended. Jesus, if the relationship ought to move to another dimension, mighty God, I'm asking of those you place in my life, for Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, let your spirit of wisdom rest upon me, my relationships. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your spirit of wisdom rest upon me, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, regarding my relationships, Almighty Father. Let your spirit of wisdom rest upon me, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it rest upon me, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Even those that I serve in that work. Father, Lord, I pray this morning for the spirit of wisdom. Let your spirit of wisdom rest upon me, Lord, regarding relationships around me, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. The counselor, Lord, that you have put in my life. Oh, God of heaven, help me, Father. The structures you put in my life to keep me accountable. Father, the spirit of Open my eyes to oh, see Lord. them and recognize them, oh, Lord. The spirit of knowledge. Lord, place Help the spirit of knowledge upon me that I know Help me to who know, the people oh, around Lord, me are in the name of Jesus. Has made up as as has translated to another level. Help me, oh God, the spirit of knowledge. Help me to know who a person is. Help me to recognize who they are. That I will not in any way, um, you know, play down who you have positioned in my life as a voice. Uh, Lord, help me to know when this person is a leader, not a pair, regardless of their age, regardless of their status. Help me to know the spirit of knowledge of knowing who a person is. Is, who that what their position is help me to distinguish help me to know when it's not just friendship help me to know when indeed it's an, a place of spiritual authority help me to know who a person is help me to know who my counselors are oh the spirit of knowledge operational even in my relationships in the name of the lord jesus oh almighty god i would delight in obeying you concerning my relationships oh god i would delight in obeying you i would delight in working out of the relationships you want me to walk out of. I would delight in beginning in strengthening the relationships you want me to. I would delight in obeying you, in restoring the relationships that are already even cracking up. And I would delight in obeying you, in letting the offense go out of my heart. I would delight in obeying you, in, in bridging back the walls uh, that you are asking me to, oh God. I would delight in obeying you, in overlooking those weaknesses that may be in there while you're working in them. If you're asking me to stay in that relationship, then I would delight in obeying you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, our ah, Father, I delight in obeying you. I will not judge by appearance. I will not judge by appearance. In my relationships, I will not judge by what I see with my eyes. I will not judge them by their position, by their number of followers, by their acquisition, by their material possessions. I will not judge with just what I see with my eyes. I will not judge with because, oh, they're petite, oh, they're small, oh, they don't speak so well. I will not judge with my eyes, oh God. If you're saying this is who needs to be in my life, then it is who needs to be in my life. If you're saying this is who needs to go, then it's who needs to go. That's why we sang earlier on that, yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord over my relationships. And so, Father, I pray this morning that I will not judge, oh God, by appearance. Ah, I will not judge because they seem to be fiery, because they seem to have the following, because they seem to be the hit one. I will not judge by appearance. Ah, ah. Father, I will not judge by appearance. I will not attach myself to a person, to a people, to a ministry, to a place that you have not called me to because it looks like it's the it place. It's the happening place. I will not judge by appearance. In the name of the Lord Jesus, ah, Father, concerning my positioning, concerning where I serve, concerning where I'm plugged, concerning where I'm planted, concerning where I'm positioned, mighty God, I will not judge by appearance. I will not judge because everybody seems to be following, because everybody seems to be saying this, I will not judge. It will be the spirit spirit of wisdom, the spirit of the knowledge from the God himself. That is what will, will, will position me. That is what will direct me. That is what will lead me. Father, I will not judge by appearance. I will not just judge by what I see. I will not just judge based on hearsay, what everyone is saying. Oh, this is who this person is. Oh, whether it is for their good or their bad, I will not judge by just hearsay. I will be led by the spirit. For the Bible says as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in my relationships, I do not make my decisions based on hearsay. I do not judge by what I see. I do not judge by what I 
I fear, I am led by the Spirit. Ah, let us decree and declare that over our relationship this morning. That concerning my relationships, concerning my partnerships, concerning those that I, I that, 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 that I attach myself to, concerning my friends, uh, concerning my prayer partners, concerning those that I get counsel from, concerning those that I submit myself to, concerning the place where I worship, where I worship, I will not judge by hearsay. Concerning those that I bring on the team to work with me, concerning those that I lean on for counsel, Jehovah, I will not judge by hearsay. I will not judge by appearance, oh God. I will know no man after the flesh. I will know them by the spirit. Father, I bring my relationships to you, oh God, this morning. For I know the things you are set to do in my life in this season, it will be through people. Lord, I will not make the wrong decisions in my relationships, oh God. I will not be wrongly aligned. I will not be wrongly aligned. For the spirit of the Lord rests upon me. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. I will delight in obeying the Lord. I will not judge by appearance. I will not make a decision based on hearsay. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I will not make a decision based on hearsay. What he said, what she said. No, it will be about what you are saying now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Still praying about our relationships this morning. We're going to ask, Father, help me to know which ties I need to cut. Help me to know which ties. Help me to know when the season of a relationship is over. You know, again, it is not about the council culture, but we see it even in scriptures. We see it with Abraham and with Lot. We see it where it was. You know what? It's actually time for us to go our separate ways. And it's. And I tell people that when, when that happens, it doesn't mean that that person is evil or you are evil. It's just that in God's agenda, the time for it is over for reasons best known to God. And so we have to be very careful to not just think that when God says, "Severe you yourself from that person, that it necessarily means that they have turned against him. No, for a season, he might call it because he might want to teach you various things, because he might want to put you in different seasons. And it's the God that knows. It's the God that knows that if you and this person are tightly joined at at, at, at the hips in this season, it might limit you from understanding what he is doing. And so for whatever reasons, whether it is that they are uh, they, they are deterring or whether it's that God wants to do a work in both of you separately, whatever it may be, the prayer is, Lord, help me to know which ties I need to cut in this season of my life. For the things that you're doing and you're set to do in my life, help me to know the relationships that I need to step away from. Help me to know the relationships that that time has ended. Lord, I will not be emotional about the relationships in my life. Lord, you are my Lord. You are my Lord. And over my relationships, you are are the Lord. And so, Father, I'm asking this morning, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you open my eyes to see the relationships that I need to step away from, to see the relationships that I need to really take myself away from. It doesn't matter how long it's been. It doesn't matter if it's been an alumni or a group of over 18 years. If the time is done, if you say it's over, it's over. So, Lord, I receive understanding the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge. Help me to know whatever whatever relationship in my life I need to step away from, wherever I am planted, that I need to get out of. Lord God Almighty, if that is what you're saying in that season, then Lord, help me to understand it. Help me to know the ties that need to be caught in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we're going to pray next. Help me to know hey, the relationships I need to strengthen.
Help me to know the relationships that I need to strengthen in this season. Help me to know the ones that I need to take to the next level. Yes, we're acquaintances now, but you did not bring them into my life to be acquaintance. Yes, they are colleagues. You did not bring them to me to just be colleagues. There's destiny in that relationship. Yes, I may have met them at a, at a family event, but you did not just even put it as just that. You had a greater plan. They might even just be cousins. They might just be cousins, you know, uh, extended family. But there is something you want to do in that relationship. There is a pouring out. There is a growing up. There is a strengthening. There is something you want to do. Our prayer this morning is, Lord, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, to know the relationships I need to strengthen, to know the relationships that I need to strengthen. That I will not judge after, I will not just judge with my eyes. I will not know the people in my life just by the flesh. That I will know who they really are, who you have called them to be. Help me to know the people you are positioned in my life. You know, um, one thing that comes to mind as I pray now is a relationship with a friend of mine. I actually met her as, um, excuse me, I met her as um, a vendor, right? I do gifts and she does cakes. And that's how we met. Somebody introduced us. Ah, if you want to do cake, I know this girl, new business, she's also started. You might want to, you know, engage her. And then our relationship progressed and she started baking cakes for us. I mean, I've known her now maybe 13 years. And then halfway through that relationship, it, it, um, because of the way that I am in my work, in my detail, my creativity expression, also the same for her, we clashed a lot with our work. Because when I give a brief, I want you to follow that brief to the T. Not because I don't want you to express yourself creatively, no. But because I see the end of what I am doing. So when I say it's a blue cake, you cannot be inspired to make it purple, no. The blue needs to be blue because what I'm working with at the end is a blue thing, you know? So, but I think for her, she just gets there and just flows. Like, mm, I think uh, this shade of blue is better than the one top I said. So we clashed a lot. We clashed a lot. Um, you know, during Valentine's when we had big orders, oh my God, it'll be a big fight. She would tell her husband, I was going to just be calming her down, you know? And then we came to an understanding that, see, as far as our relationship goes, looks like work is going to hinder our, we are good friends, and this work seems to be um, a hindrance. And so we step back. I mean, in a year, this was someone that will probably do 100 cakes for me in a year. Now, if she does cakes, maybe she will do five. And I'm talking about for over five years now. However, our relationship has transited into one of deep friendship. And so it was knowing, it was that knowledge that this relationship might not prosper in a business relationship as it was originally intended. But, you know, it's better as friends. And she's perhaps one of my creative friends. I mean, I shared my testimony about taking a space, right? And before I got the um, painters and everybody in to start doing their work, I told myself, I need to get her into the... I need her to come and see. Because I know, I know. And it's knowing, not knowing people by the flesh. Because I know that if I give A to her, she has the gift to make this B, C, D, E. She just has a gift of being able to see it. And so I've had to come to recognize that even though we're both amazing creatives in our own right, we live in our industry. I've had to learn that when I am together with her, by the spirit of God that works in her, she always takes it up to the new level. So when we got there, all the plants that I should like, no, you cannot do that there. You should paint it here. This should be this room. That should be this room. I just had to stop and say, this is why I love you. Give her a hug. And I was thankful that I did not get overly confident in my own gifts to say, Kenny, I don't need that opinion because I have recognized, and that's what I'm saying. I have recognized that when it comes to certain expressions, I would always invite her in. And so we're going to go back to that, under, to that prayer of understanding that, Lord, help me to know because yeah, best believe that helps me. It helps my business. It helps, you know, how I make my expressions. It helps the big projects that I do. I take something small, I share with her, and it just takes a new life. That is recognition. So the prayer this morning is, Lord, help me to know the relationships I need to strengthen. Help me to know what people really represent in my life when the season is over. So for me and her, the relationship had to end as per business, vendor, supplier, and um, client. We now had to take it to the next level of 
friendship and in this case creative i don't know what you will call it she's just my creative ginger that's what i call her but all that god i can't tell you the amount of things that god has used my conversations with her to birth so this is to say there are many people that god has placed in your life and while they might not function while their their tenure in this definition may have ended they might now why he's not your boss he might not be the one to whom you you say yes sir to every day when you go to work he might actually in god's plan still remain a mentor it is recognizing so father we are praying lord in the name of the lord jesus help me to know help me to know who people really are help me to see them through your eyes help me to see oh god who you are positioned people to be in my life that I will not know one after the flesh. I will not just know them by the flesh. I will know them by the spirit. Father Lord, in my business engagement, in my career, help me to know when that person is not just a colleague, but someone who you are placed in my life as a connector. Help me to know when he is not just my former boss, but my mentor, but someone who speaks into my career decisions. Lord God Almighty, help me to know when they're not just my unit leader. When they're not just the team leader, but even more, they have bigger positions or higher positions and roles to play in my life. Help me to know when that individual is not just someone on my team, not just someone that reports to me, but someone I'm called to disciple. Oh Lord God Almighty, help me to see the people you are putting in my life the way you see them. Oh Makoya Namashaka, Rika da Barado Sekete, Reka de Brezotoria Bakanda. See, hmm. I can't actually leave this without sharing some of my experiences because as I'm praying, the Holy Spirit is giving me things to see. He's opening my eyes to see that this is an important prayer for us to pray. Two Mondays ago, the Holy Spirit, or three Mondays ago, the Holy Spirit gave me an idea while I was in my devotion, like literally worshiping. You know, he gave me an idea of something to do in business. And I thought, this is good. This is fantastic. I will just launch it as a set of products. One week, I'll work on it. This week, I will launch it. But there is someone in my life who, again, was positioned in my life as a service provider. He did my brand redesign. And that's really all about it. The work was 2019. But he has remained in my life as a stakeholder, even in the decisions that I make in the business. And I defer to him a lot. Again, that speaks to recognition. Knowing that even though the original project for which he was recruited, quote unquote, into my life is over, there is still a role he plays. And so I'd gone ahead, had my idea, designed what I was going to do. And I just said, let me run it by this guy. <laughs> and so I got on a call that Wednesday. I was already ready to execute, ready to launch by Monday. But I think I got on the call with him on Wednesday or Thursday. And I said, ah, I thought I should share this with you. Come and see what I'm thinking of launching. Hmm. When I would not heard him scream like that in a while, it was like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is amazing. This, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want to. I said, no, 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 no. You cannot launch this on Monday. This is not just a, a product launch. This is a campaign. This is something you can run for the next seven months. Brothers and sisters, by just being on that call, he took that idea from a, all right, cool, we're just going to launch products on Monday to a full, like the possibilities that have been, that has opened up to me, thank you, Jesus, by having that, by recognizing who that person is, the gifts they carry, and perhaps what God would use them to do by submitting it to him. Oh, in fact, I don't even think I've scratched the surface of the possibilities. You know, how it was the campaign, how we, the whole idea of how we're going to do it literally shifted. And I can see the difference. The testimonies that are even coming from it is mind blowing, you know? And I was thinking about it earlier on this week. I was like, Lord, are you saying that if I did not share this thing with him? Because that's what baffles me. That the God that gave me the idea, that gave me the raw idea, could have told me now that it can be a campaign. But because the way of God 
is in people. He would always embody some of the counsel and our direction and how to. So yes, you have the idea, but how to birth that idea is placed in certain people by their experiences, by their own, you know, encounters. I realized that submitting that idea to him gave it more life. And so this week I thought, so if I did not share this with this guy, does that mean that I would have wasted this idea that God gave me? Like if I actually follow through on this idea, honestly, it can have a life of its own and become a movement of its own. That's the possibility. And as I was thinking, I felt like a scripture, Proverbs, it says that there is a lazy hunter does not even take to roast that which he catches. That, that verse had not left me. That is it possible that I could have wasted this idea is that God gave me an idea that could, that could do 100%? Is it possible that if I just kept it with myself, I could have only just birthed 30% of it and I would have been feeling cool with myself? But because I recognized who people are around me, it doesn't matter how they came in, what title they used to come in. If the Lord says this is who this person is, submit, because I'm, I'm one of the business now, I can't decide my thing, but no, submitting that idea to that person has allowed it to come up. So I am like, God, I could have wasted this thing. I might have not been a good steward. I hope we're still praying. The prayer is, Lord, help me to recognize who people really are. Because honestly, I could have just worked, worked, sweated, worked, out, and not even gotten anything out of that idea God gave me until it was in the right conversation with the right people. And then it caught even more fire. That's sweatless. And then they wonder, oh my God, you know, you just win, you just, you know, everything's easy, everything starts to go. Not necessarily. But by the fact that I recognize the gifts that God has put around me and I've leveraged on them, now what God gave me as a simple idea has more life. We're still praying. Lord, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge about the people that you have placed in my life. It's a powerful prayer because it means that there's some things you will stress and work hard for that you have no business doing. There's some things you'll be cracking your head over that you have no business if you recognize who people are in your life. It means that you, instead of laboring to get something done for a year, God will position you, open your eyes to see who this person is, such that in a month, in a week, the work is done. According to Isaiah 11, oh God, and verse 2, the spirit of knowledge. Lord, I pray concerning my relationships, concerning the people that you placed in my life, I'm asking, oh God, for knowledge. The spirit of knowledge, help me to know them and know them by the spirit, not know them by the flesh, know them by the spirit, who they are, what gifts you put in their life to serve the body including me what anointings upon their life that should help my own my own efforts grow help me to recognize to whom oh god as well you have called me to be a blessing to open my eyes now oh god open my eyes oh god God, open my eyes to see, to see people as you see them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, help me to know which relationships need to be redefined in my life. Ha! Help me to know the relationships that need to carry a new title, that need to move from former boss to mentor, that needs to move from colleague to mentor, that needs to move from unit member to 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 to, to uh, someone I disciple, help me to know, help me to know, oh God, Rekade Boroso Toria, Randadadadadadabasha, Rekede Breso Toria Bakanda, Inkra Zotoria Bakanda, that friend uh, whose position really to give me counsel when it comes to business decision, that friend whose position really is to give me guidance in marital decisions, uh, let me see them, oh God, open my eyes, uh, Lord, open my eyes, uh, the spirit of knowledge, oh God. You don't waste resources. You don't waste resources. Help me to be a good steward of the people that you put in my life. Help me to be a good steward of the relationships that you put around me. Help 
Boro Sotoria Baradabashata, Radeke de Boro Sotoria Bacande, Reda Boro Soto, Rizeke Televosha, Mara de Boro Sotoria, Rican de Boro Sotoria Bacanda, Mara Dose Tele Boro Sotoria, Rekada Bashatalia Bacanda, E Radadadadada. I might have met them on Instagram. I might just have met them, you know, on the streets of Instagram, but that was not why I met them. That was not why you connected us. There was a deeper reason. Lord, help me to recognize. Uh, help me to recognize who people are, the people that you have put into my life, the spirit of discernment. Uh, help me to discern, to rightly discern people, to rightly discern people, to rightly discern positions. Ikarada basente, radeke de borosotoria, rika de borosotoria bashanta. Even in the jobs that you have placed us, help us to rightly discern the people around us, to discern that season, to discern what it is that we're doing there. Ikaranda baradasata, ere de borosotoria bashata, rekados de kete le borosoto, Isaiah 11 verse 3, we will not judge by mere appearance. We will not judge by mere appearance. Ah, in this month of insight and revelation, Lord God Almighty, in every area we're working in darkness concerning our relationships, let the flood light. Let the flood light. Let the flood light. Post eka rosa talia nanama. Imbre zotoria baradabashata. Radeke de boroso koto. Rikan de brezotoria. Radeke de bosha. Rizatolia bakandere. Rika de boroso toria bashata. I hope we're praying. This prayer we're praying can be the life changer for many of us. This, the answers that we've been fasting, praying for years can literally be hidden in this prayer that we're praying. When God opens your eyes to see the people that you have put around you, not that you may use them, but that you may fully steward that relationship for all the intents and purposes that God has for it. You know, again, I'm just, you know, and, and maybe it's the story of my life is the fact that I look at the things that I've done, that I'm doing, and all I see is people. I see people right at the center of it. I see the guy who I met eight years ago, who was just a graphic designer. Literally, that's what he does. Oh, but I see that relationship now, six years, yeah, 2018, six years later. And the space that I'm designing, I, I literally defer to him. What should I do here? He said, no, use this color. Use that color. It takes recognition. It takes recognizing who someone is. I don't know how much I would have stressed, literally stressed out, trying to figure out the things I need to figure out now. But because eyes have been opened, and by the Spirit, I recognize that mm, you didn't come into my life. God didn't send you into my life just to be my graphic designer. No, I can see now by understanding many years later that God called me to serve you and help you grow up spiritually. It's recognition. Recognizing that, no, there is something that God put in the inside of you that he needs me to help you birth. But I had to recognize, he's not, in fact, in fact, Three years ago, the guy sacked me as his client. He was like, see, this thing is not working. It's like the spontaneity in this, I need this design. I need it, it's not working. And I, I, talking about it, I recognized that he might not have even known what he was doing. But in that moment, he said, no, this relationship can no longer be transactional. It can't be, you pay me a monthly wage for the design. So as we speak, he doesn't collect a dime from me. Oh, but he still does design for me. So he understood that, mm, this it came to an understanding that this relationship, this the nature of it, she's no longer somebody who pays me for a graphic design job. She's so now he defers. Oh, I want to do this. What do you think? Oh, I'm starting this training. What do you think? And as I see it, I've seen him blossom, I've seen him grow. You know, so whether it's from me or even from him, there are people right now who you are delivering a service for, who God has bigger intentions in that relationship than you just being a service provider to them. That person is not just your client. They're actually meant to perhaps be a spiritual guide. They're perhaps be a business mentor. But if you don't see it, you will just be laboring there as someone that is just providing a service. So let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Karabas Sakiti, open my eyes, oh God. Open my eyes, Father, to understand, to understand the relationships that you placed me in, to understand when their titles need to shift, where their positions need to shift. 
where there arose the Kishifta in the name of the Lord Jesus. Rada Basotelia Bakanda, Rekedeboro Sotoria Bakinda Bashata, Reda da 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 Basikete, Embarado Sotelia Bakande Bosoto. Help me to see people through your eyes. Help me to see people through your eyes. Help me to see people through your eyes. Help me to see the relationships through your eyes. Yes, he's your husband, the father of your children. Hey, but maybe he's more. Maybe he's more than. Help me to see. Help me to see what you are placed in my husband that is to serve my purpose in life beyond him being the father of my children. Help me to see my wife and the role that she plays. There are the things you put inside her for me, beyond her just being the woman I lay with and who bears my children. Help me to see. Open my eyes, oh God, to see. To see who people really are to me. Yes, she could be my baby sister. But Lord, is there more? Is there more? Is there more? Is she a voice of reason? Is she a voice of counsel? Is she, is she, is she that person who will speak to a situation that would make me avoid evil? Help me to see. Help me to see people, oh God, help me to see them through your eyes, Father. Help me to see Karadabashata, that I know no man after the flesh. Yes, it may be my dad or my mom. And yes, they are Pentecostal. They don't even know the spirit like I do. Ah, but Lord, help me to see that they carry a gift. They carry a gift where they speak things. Help me to see See that they carry a gift uh, and they can have a word of warning uh, for me to avoid evil. Help me to see. Help me not to belittle people around me. Yes, it might just be the security guard. He caranda baradosete, erada baradosekete, but he might be the connect for the next level. See what I just said now is the testimony of my sister, the 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 gates man that used to be beside her in her former house. You know. Um, they were nice to him. They were kind to him. You know, he sometimes helped them open their gates. Sometimes helped them with their generator. You know, and then of course he moved on because he didn't really like his boss. And my sister and her husband have been believing God for a better place. You know, and all of that. One day I don't even know how. Maybe she ran into him somewhere. I think, I can't even remember the story now. But the long and short of it was he was a neighbor to a building that was being let out that they did not even know. Like there was no sign on there. Anyway, cut long story short, he became their connect. He became the one that gave them the number. I said, Madam, this house. I said, let me give you the number. Hmm. In God's divine providence, that person happened to be someone connected to one of our clients. I can't even tell you the long story, but the long story is we just sat and I said, wow, wow. That guy was not just a gate man. Mm -mm. He was not a gate man. He was their connector to the next place that God was going to take them. He was their connector to that place that they had been praying and believing for. Father, open my eyes. Don't let me believe to people. Help me to see God in every man because they are created in your image. You know, sometimes we just spend time praying, God, send me help, help our destiny. Many of them are already around us. Many of them are already around us. Oh, Lord, I'm looking for a business mentor. Oh, Lord, I'm looking for a this, this, this. They might even be around you already, but you haven't recognized. You haven't recognized them. So therefore, you haven't positioned your heart. You are not honoring that grace and that gift. So it's not going to flow. Mm -mm. For everyone who I called something, that gift in them flows towards me. And I see it. For everyone that I say, ah, my creative ginger. When I share the idea with her like this, the, the, the creativity will have more life of a truth, that anointing flows towards me. It flows. Ah, my this one is my inspirer. If I don't even know whether I should do it, I, and I need Ginger to just do what I, courage, let me just speak to her. I'm going to fire me up. I get on the call, that anointing flows. They really Ginger I me mean, to do what I need to do. And so, Lord God Almighty, help me to see people the way you see them. Help me to see the people you have placed in my life. Help me to submit to the graces and the anointings that you placed around me to move me to my next level. Help me to see. If Ruth did not see that her mother-in-law was the did not see her the way God wanted her to see her. She won't be in the lineage of Jesus. She won't be. She'll have just seen. In fact, your mother-in-law is not just your mother-in-law. Who could it be? 
that your mother-in-law carries more grace and more anointing for things that God wants to do in your destiny beyond that just being the mother of your husband or your wife. Lord, open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see because God is amazing. You know, we, we, we know this. God is strategic. There's a way he places people in our lives that just blows your mind. Like, ah, ah, how is it possible? And so we, we call it, the, uh, this world is, is not, it's a small world. That's how we explain it. But that's not it. That is God's divinity. When you say it's a small world, like, ah, who would have thought that this person and that person, that's God's positioning. That's God moving things around. But if you don't see it, if you don't see it through the eyes of the spirit, you might miss it. And you'll be laboring over nothing that you don't have any business because God already put it beside, but you did not see it. So we pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, ah, Baba. And he said, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of knowledge, I will not judge by my appearance, by appearance only, I will not judge by hearsay. I will know people by the spirit. I will know them by the spirit. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. For the next two minutes, we're going to pray a prayer that was just so strong on my heart as I listened to DDK. Lord, teach me what it means to follow. Mm. Teach me what it means to follow. Teach me what it means to follow. Teach me what it means to stay, ah, to, be, to follow, to follow, to glean from a place where you have planted me, Father. Father, teach me. Help me to remain committed to following you where you have positioned me. Help me to remain grounded, to remain committed to the place where you have planted me. Ah, Father, like this restless spirit, this orphan spirit that makes people run around like a headless chicken looking for what's not lost. Father, take it far away from me. Help me, oh God, to remain committed to following where you have planted me, where you have positioned me. And if I need to be uprooted, uproot me, oh God. If I need to be rightly positioned, rightly position me, oh God. But Lord, I'm asking for your help. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me, Lord, help me oh God. Her Lord help me, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we are prayed. You know, till for the next few minutes, I want us to pray in the spirit. Oh, praying in the spirit is, I'm sure we all know one of the most powerful things that we have as an advantage. We've prayed over the past, you know, 50 minutes now about our relationships. I want us to spend time intensely praying in the spirit. But as you do, pay attention. Don't pray in the spirit mindlessly. Mm -mm. You're going to pray in the spirit and you're going to pay attention to the things that the Holy Spirit is dropping in your spirit. Somebody's face flashes. Somebody's name flashes. Somebody you have not spoken to in 10 years, 20 years. You just flash. And you just feel like, reach out to this person. See, the idea that God gave me two Mondays ago, he triggered it by telling me, send a message to this person. And I'm like, I've got, in fact, I was in my, I was in my quiet time around, it was like 7.20, 7.25. I was praying when he dropped. He said, send a message to this guy, just checking on him. And I was like, oh, but Lord, I'm talking to you now. Me and you are having time. And I've had to learn that, that all that stuff is, obedience is worship. Is worship. You're wasting your time. As you're worshiping me, I'm telling you, send this message. So send it. The guy responded. And that was how the Lord layered the next instruction, that you know what, you should do this. And that's how this idea has started coming alive. And of course, by the time I took it to this friend of mine, the idea had more wings. I mean, when you really know the ways of God, it blows your mind. It causes you to pay attention to the little things. So we're going to pray in the street for the next few minutes. And as we do so, pay attention. The names, the faces, the instructions, whatever it is that God is asking you to do. Whoever is asking you to forgive, oh, don't just waste time praying. If you don't let that thing go, yes, they betrayed you. But if God is asking you to forgive, which is asking you to forgive, it's only the, I'm asking you to forgive. No, the Bible says it. It says when you bring your offering before the altar, and you remember, let me even shock you. The Bible actually says when you remember your brother has something against you. It's not like when you have something against them. It's like, pay, put a benny, pay. this person is doing one kind. It's as if they have an issue with me. Bible says, drop that gift at the altar. Go, be reconciled, and come back. So forgiveness is a permanent instruction Woo! on all our relationships. You don't, the Lord will not tell you, uh, Lord, the Lord told me to forgive. No, he already told you from the beginning. That's the instruction. You walk in love. So 
as we pray in the spirit, receive grace to forgive, receive grace to let go, receive grace to walk away, receive grace to rebuild, receive grace, whatever it is. So as we pray this morning, I ask that we keep our minds tuned in to download from heaven as it opens, as it redefines people. Shall we pray? If where you are is not noisy, please unmute your mic and let us pray together. Let us pray together over our relationships. God is doing something with it this morning. God is about to shift us this morning and it comes from that place of recognition. Bakanda <laughs> Rada 
in jesus mighty name we have prayed in jesus name we have prayed we have we have stirred up our spirits to download from heaven so let's keep paying attention pay attention to what he says to you during the course of the day the weekend and over the next few weeks he drops someone in your mind pressing to it um you might just get a phone call from someone you've not heard from in a while <laughs> praying to it and see what because you prayed it you have prayed it you're praying for recognition you're praying for the right people you're praying for open eyes you're praying you know you have prayed and so Pay attention, expect the answers. And I think that's what I'm trying to say. Let's expect that he would answer with instructions. He would, uh, would answer with things happening. Just stay in that place and just obey. Call this person, obey. Go and see that person, obey. Tell this person this thing, obey. You know, because I believe that God is doing something, um, mm-hmm. you know, in our lives with our relationships. All of us, most of us are entering into new seasons and people really are at the center of it. And so, Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us to pray. We thank you, Father, because testimonies will abound from this day about what you have done with our relationships. For those of us that need courage to walk away, we receive that grace and that courage. For those of us that require to begin again, to begin, to even start new. You know, all of those, oh, don't do friendship in old, old age. All of that, no. Mm-hmm. If God says the person you need for this new season is someone mm-hmm. you're going to meet today, then so be it. So, Father, we receive the grace that we need. We receive the grace. We receive the anointing. We receive the healing. We receive the help. We receive it, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. The humility to submit to the people mm-hmm. around us that you have gifted with with, mm-hmm. with 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 the graces to help us navigate the season we are in into the new season, the humility to submit to 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 receive the counsel from those that are around us that may quote and unquote be younger to us. Father, we just ask for grace, grace this morning in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the instructions that will come. Thank you because we will not miss it. We will not miss it. We'll be, we, you will quicken our spirits. We will hear and we will obey. And as we obey, we will see the testimonies burst forth. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you all for joining this morning. Please remember that this is our last watch for today. We resume uh, at the 12 a.m. watch on Monday. Um, and yes, recalibrate is still happening today at nine, one, and four. I think. Hope I got that wrong, right. But yes, just check up for the open nation um for the details. But yes, it resumes this morning at nine a.m., um, one p.m., and then four p.m. for the evening session. It has been amazing. So yes, let us still stay plugged in. I bless God, and I believe God. We will have 
Thursday, we'll be filled with plenty of testimonies on this relationship thing. God has set some things in motion. Please, let's just stay tuned, tuned and connected, discerning, because the enemy too will do his own. Oh, let's discern, let's discern. What doors need to be opened? What doors need to be shut? What doors need to be broken down? What relationships need to be established? God has done something today. God bless you. Have a beautiful weekend. And bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. Have a beautiful day.